Hello, Bobby Torres of Fright Box Recording here with some tips on parallel compressing your drum bus. Um, I decided to make a video on this because uh, I approach it in an extremely simple manner. Uh, I've seen people do this a bunch of different ways, none of which are wrong. Uh, there is no right or wrong way. Uh, I just find to be mine to be the most straightforward, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. Um, so anyway, for anyone that does not know what parallel compression is, it's an extremely simple concept. Pretty much you take a dry signal that is not compressed and you combine it with a signal of the exact same sound that is compressed. So your result will be both the compressed and the dry sound blended together. A technique that's been widely used amongst all different genres, uh, rock, metal, pop, hip hop even, um, uh, it's powerful because you essentially get the best of both worlds. Uh, when you over compress something, you could kind of suck the life out of it. Uh, and when you don't compress something, it could kind of be lacking punch. So by combining the two, you have both the uncompressed sound and the punchy sound. Uh, and it's really popular to do this on your drum bus. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm gonna play for you this sample, which I am implementing parallel compression. I'm not a big fan of just compressing my drum bus alone. I don't like the sound of a lot of compression in general, but with parallel compression, again, you get the best of both worlds. So this track is by uh, my good friends in this band called Blue Lizard. They are not a brutal death metal band. They're kind of like a more of a straightforward Foo Fighters-y rock. Uh, oh, they remind me a lot of that other band. Oh, 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 I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Helmet. They kind of remind me a little bit of, of Helmet, which is awesome. They're heavy as hell, but in like a grooving kind of way. So I really wanted to implement that groove and really kind of like just, you know, really get that room pumping. And there's a lot of room for nice thick low end, which you kind of can't have in a lot of the death metal crazy shit that I do. Uh, but yeah, let's take a listen to the sample. Let's check it out. Okay, not a bad little drum sound. Uh, and a lot of it is achieved actually with uh, parallel compression because it's got that snap, but it's still got some dynamics to it. So uh, what a lot of people will do when it comes to parallel compression, uh, and I use this from time to time myself, is they'll actually set up individual sends on each of their um, individual drums. So they have maximum control going to their, both their drum bus and their parallel bus. So what they would do is have their drums going to like their regular drum bus, right? For that all of their drums are going to. Uh, and then the individual sends will, will be sent to their parallel bus. Um, I take it a step further in terms of simplicity. And I just send the exact same um, signal to both the parallel bus and the just dry drum bus. And if you look here, the bus that says drums is completely, there's nothing on it. No EQ, no compression, nothing. And then the parallel bus, again, it's the exact same bus, just duplicated in Pro Tools, which you can do in any DAW, uh, has the, uh, the compressor on it, which is kicking pretty heavily, which we'll look at in a second. Um, and then these two are just being sent to a master bus. So if I wanted to, you know, have a touch of EQ applied to the, all of the drums, I would just do it on my master bus because this master bus, both of these tracks are being sent to. Um, but the trick for me is that I do not send room mics or cymbals to the drum bus at all. The room mics and cymbals, well, the room mics go directly to the output, straight to the master fader. Um, and the cymbals go to their own bus, which is completely, again, no compression added to it because I hate the sound of overly compressed cymbals. Uh, you'll end up in a whole, a whole bunch of trouble with the hi hat, you know, kicking up because it's, whatever the compression brings up stuff you don't want it to bring up with the overhead tracks. Uh, so to avoid that, I just, I just have the overheads going to their own bus, and that way I could really just mess around with the shells. And when I approach it that way, I found that you don't really need to set up separate sends, at least for the stuff that I work on. Uh, so anyway. Uh, let's take a look at that once more and let's see how much this compressor is kicking in. It's, it's, it's kicking in a lot. Check it out. Yeah, 8 dB of compression. Uh, and to be honest with you, these settings don't really matter much. I mean, the parallel bus is only supplementing the, the dry bus. So yeah, 8 dB of compression kicking on the kick, snare, toms, everything just tucked underneath my main drum bus. Uh, and I don't really find much 
of a point to tweak it any further than this. As long as it's not really kicking in like 16 dB. I mean, maybe I'll even do that sometimes, but 8 dB is a, a bunch of compression that you would not want to ha have applied to all of your drums, you know, without having the dry bus combined with it. Uh, and that's it. So again, I just wanted to share this simple technique. It doesn't take much. You're just simply routing your drums to a single bus, duplicating the bus, compressing the one, blending it to taste, right? It doesn't matter, just use your ears. It could be maybe even more compressed drums and less uncompressed drums, whatever you're feeling at the moment. Uh, I prefer a less compressed sound, so I go for more of the dry drum sound and I blend in the compressed sound. Uh, but you know, that's the beauty of this stuff. It's an art form, uh, there is no right or wrong. Uh, and I just send my cymbals to their own dry bus. So if I wanna EQ the cymbals as a whole, I could do that. I'm not doing it in this case. There is no EQ going on at all on any of the buses. Um, and the, the room mics are sent, com you know, just directly to the, the, um, master fader. That's it. I like to keep things lean and simple and focus on the things that actually matter, like the songwriting and recording right at the source and, uh, just melding the tracks with, with balance. It goes a long way. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I put together a quick little checklist for you guys that you could download. Uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, if you found the video, uh, informative. Throw me a like, subscribe, share. Um, and until next time, happy mixing.